Good morning, folks. We're out a bit later again this morning, still in New Mexico at the Electric Universe Conference. Opening night was a lot of fun. We got four more days to go. Top story today is at spaceweather.com. For those who have heard us discuss chain reaction flaring and how it likely nullifies the notion of an interior flare process, today's recommended article is on spaceweather.com's homepage. They've got a good example of it from just yesterday. The GOES SXI is terrific for monitoring those as well. Quickly looking at the quakes. We took three in Papua New Guinea in quick succession. Largest one last, but tough to tell if these are foreshocks. Meanwhile, Atacama popped one. So did the area off the coast of Nicaragua. Looking at the RSOE EDIS alert map, after a leaky water valve was discovered and under federal scrutiny, one of the reactors at Susquehanna was shut down. This reactor is currently one of nine in the U.S. listed as degraded. Using the alert map to jump to the weather, hail destroyed so many crops in the western subcontinent that at least 10 farmer suicides have been confirmed. As the storm crossed the country, it also left four eastern Indians dead and 190 homes destroyed due to the force of the storm. South America, southeastern coast on alert as a convergence is drawing from the moisture bank to the north, the convergence won't be fun. Coming to Australia and New Zealand, still got Mike over to the far right, but the convergence of interest is cutting up between the nations from a southern low. Might make a tiny mess today in Tasmania before heading east. Counterclockwise drive in the North Atlantic. That's another one of those lows we saw all winter and missed the last couple of weeks. We'd love to get some weather shares from anyone who can testify on the strength of the storm or any damage to already crested areas. We use the U.S. wind map here to show the lows slowly encroaching but still keeping safe distance from the southeastern high. The leading edge brings the storms and the high will extend them out to the lead, making for conditions to be rough out ahead and to the north of the actual low cells. That's where tonight's top watches will be. Sunspots. Look at all we have to see here. Northern groups still by themselves, so let's run the departing limb to incoming on the south. I'll kind of spoil the rest, this is our top spot right now, but it is indeed almost out of sight. Coming across the disk, we see a lot of potential for magnetic mixing. But at the end of the line, we either see nicely segregated umbras of differing polarity, or the lack of large enough spots for a proper mix. Earth's connectivity has jumped back center disk away from the limb, although at least one connection point remains wrapped around the back. Hard as it is to believe, so many spots could be so benign. Down goes Frasia. The sun continues intermittently doing its maunder impression in the face of what's seen on our disk. Solar wind? The speed ramp late in the day was utterly pitiful, not at all what I expected. And the story returns to a major density wave now. Perhaps we were a day off on the coronal stream. Watch for that speed ramp to get the KP active like the electron flux is already. Shots of our star to close, starting with the heartbeat of a sunspot. It's 7 a.m. in the east, 5 a.m. here at the Electric Universe Conference. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.